weapons and poison gas. Raise the awareness that our planet is in a grave danger. We made a billion dollars to the UN causes, myself. All the people in the world have to work together to save our planet and ourselves. Thank you for joining me for this conversation. I've really been looking forward to it. Thank you, Sue. <laughs> On Monday night, April 14th, Ted Turner Documentaries has a premiering documentary, four hours, excuse me, four nights, two hours a night, total of eight hours, avoiding Armageddon. What's it about? It's about weapons of mass destruction and... Uh, and, and some thoughts on uh, what we can do to uh, reduce the, the threat that they pose to, to humanity. Was there a moment in time, an epiphany at some point, and you said, got to do this? Uh, after the, even though CNN reported, reported to me, uh, like just about everyone else, when the Cold War ended in, in uh, 1991, uh, I, like most people, figured that we'd uh, really make uh, some progress to getting rid of weapons of mass destruction since we had come so close to destroying humanity during the Cold, the cold War that uh, we, could, we would realize and see that nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons don't have any uh, place in a modern, educated, uh, uh, civilized society. Uh, and, 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 and like most of the news media, CNN departed from these stories and went on covering the other things that were uh, that were, were happening and, and, and we collectively, all of us, uh, humanity, the United Nations, pretty well let the weapons of mass destruction issue uh, go on to the back burners and, and the years went by and, and no progress was made. They were kind of forgotten uh, like a rattlesnake coiled up under your uh, dining room table that you just learn to, to learn to live with, uh, try not to step on him. Uh, as long as and and, and 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 then when India and Pakistan uh, came close to a nuclear war, they they announced that they had uh, both had nuclear weapons and did those tests. That that served as a as, as a wake up call at least for me. And I looked back into the situation, and sure enough, there there was virtually no progress had been made for close to ten years. And 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 in fact. The, uh, the, uh, the nuclear weapons of the United States and Russia were still on hair trigger alert with only a couple of minutes of response time uh, available to the presidents of the two countries uh, to avert nuclear war. There are no recall buttons on these ballistic missiles and there's no way to, to, uh, to blow them up. Once they're, once they're launched, they are going to hit their targets and it's gonna, it would be the the end of the world. So I, I and, and and with uh, India and Pakistan came very close to nuclear war uh, over in their you know continuing uh, disagreements about Kashmir. So I thought something needed to needed to be done. And this, of course, was over a year before 9/11. I mean, it just so happened that uh, you know was, uh, that the, the series was already uh, commissioned. It takes a couple of years to uh, do a series like this. All right. Again, Avoiding Armageddon airs nationwide on PBS stations, including here on GPTV. Monday through Thursday. Right, the 14th to the 17th. I want you to take a look at a clip with me, and this basically, this is a portion of the documentary, and it discusses terrorist activities on American soil. Take a look. You got it. One bridge, one port compound this across the nation, and we begin to sense the challenge we face. September 11th changed our perspective, our thinking, our national psyche. It made us feel vulnerable in ways we never had before. The whole notion of for 200 years our country had this great ocean on the left side and this great ocean on the right side, and we were isolated from so much of the world's negativism, you know, whether it was World War II or whether it was World War I or whether it was whatever it was. Even as late as the Desert Storm experience, it was over there. This was now a new front, and the new front is our own homeland. 3,000 Americans were killed. The devastation for their families. Uh, I'm a New Yorker. It was personal. Uh, one of my best friends was uh, on the airliner that, that hit the Pentagon. Uh, I lost friends from high school. Um, for us, uh, the fact that we couldn't stop this attack 
uh, notwithstanding the thousands of lives we believe we've saved for many years against terrorist acts, it's not only a point of reflection, it, it, it's, it's a point of action for us. How did September 11th and that, those terrorist attacks affect the direction of avoiding Armageddon? Obviously, the, the program took, after 9-11, took a decided turn towards having a, a stronger element of terrorism in it because uh, terrorism now poses probably a greater threat, uh, a greater threat to uh, to people than than state uh, than state uh, organized use of these use of these weapons. Even though uh, a terrorist using a weapon uh, could not kill everybody, the, the, the greatest danger, single danger, is the U.S. and Russian. Uh, the thousands of nuclear missiles that we have on uh, hair trigger alert. If they get launched accidentally, or Rob, uh, if relations between our countries deteriorate to a point to where, where we have a war that goes nuclear, that's the end of humanity. There's so much firepower in those arsenals, it's enough to destroy the whole world. Basically, set the world on fire. That would be, and, and it can happen at any moment because they're still on hair trigger alert. Our governments. The Russians don't want to destroy us, and we don't want to destroy the Russians. We're getting along pretty well with them for the most part. But we can't figure out how to get these weapons off hair trigger alert because uh, they, I guess they figure it's too easy to cheat. You know, I mean, so it's, 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 it's really a, a dilemma. That's the most, in my opinion, the single most important uh, important thing. And, and there's been work done on it, uh, particularly... Uh, uh, Senator Nunn and Senator Lugar, who's, that, who've worked with the, the program to, 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 to try and uh, reduce the number of uh, warheads and, 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 and make them uh, safer in, in Russia and in the United States. You have an enormous amount of outreach. This is not just it's certainly beyond entertainment. It's really beyond education. Well, it's not entertainment. I know. It's beyond it's all of that. It's information. And it all it appears to me, based on the outreach you have, I mean, this is a facilitator's guide. It's mm -hmm. questions. It's once, once you've watched this, gather around, gather all your emergency personnel, your citizens, etc., and take a look at this. This is a facilitator's guide. To me, this is almost a call to action. Would you agree? Well, yes. Well, we, we hope that, uh, that uh, you know, we, we, we live in a democracy here. And there's a lot of talk, and very, very, very uh, appropriately so, about how important democracy is in the world. But in order for democracy to uh, work properly, the citizens have to uh, educate and inform themselves about important issues so that they can ask and demand from uh, our elected leaders uh, the course of actions that, that we want to take. And, you know, a serious documentary series like this, uh, you, you put it out there because we, we do want uh, America and the world. This program is going to run all over the world. I mean, this is, what is happening after it, 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 it will, uh, We're going to try and get it, get it run in as many countries as, as we can. Uh, Warner Brothers is handling international sales, and I think that the, the state and public broadcasters and the private broadcasters will want to uh, run this series because there has never been a series on this subject, to my knowledge, that, that covered this issue in such great uh, depth as uh, this, and it's it's the issue of our time. It's the it's the most important uh, important issue because we have to make progress on this. If we if we fail to to harness these weapons of mass destruction, uh, as Georgia Bartov said years ago, he said either we get rid of the weapons or the weapons are going to get rid of us. I mean, we we have to get control of them. We do not have control of them at the current time. Adequate control. The war on Iraq basically typifies everything that you have, con have had concerns about. Whether or not Saddam Hussein at this moment has weapons of mass destruction, the U.S. took an approach. The U.N. decided to take a different approach. How do you think it should have been handled? Well, uh, I, there's going to be plenty of talk about that, and I'm, I'm involved with the... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, chairman of the United Nations uh, Foundation, and I'm just one member of the board, and uh, I, I, I'm a strong believer that we need the United Nations, not only uh, for peace and security, but also for humanitarian uh, disease, for uh, dealing with the atmosphere and the oceans. I, we, we have to, just like we have to have federal governments, even though 
they're big and bureaucratic and there are problems with them, but you still have to have these institutions. Universities are that way. Public television is that way. Networks are that. The big networks are that way. It just, it's just uh, a fact of life. And we have to, I think, uh, I'm a, 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 a personally a great supporter of the United Nations, and, and, and this uh, this, is, this has been a very divisive issue on a global basis. It's been somewhat div divisive here, here in the United uh, in the United States. And quite frankly, I mean, it is related. This is related to weapons of mass destruction and and our fear of terrorism. I think if it hadn't been for 9/11, that this probably wouldn't have happened this way. I think America wants to do something, and I you know I'd like to do something too to make it safer here. I just wonder. If this is uh, going to make it safer, reduce the chances of terrorism, or 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 increase them, uh, you spilled into my next question, which is: Are we doing more harm than good? Are well, we I mean, only the only way we'll really know whether we're doing more harm than good is uh, is to see how it plays out in the in the future. But even then, we won't know for sure because this war has changed things. The question is, and it has damaged our international law uh, institutions, and it's made some people. Uh, dislike us more than they did before, uh, and it's been uh, and it's been very controversial and and and, and divisive. But when it's over, hopefully uh, we'll close ranks. Hopefully uh, things will be better, and everyone will see that. And and uh, maybe the damage uh, will be short lived, and maybe the benefits long term will be will be great. I, I'm 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 generally try to be an an optimist and uh, and look for the for uh, the bright side of things. If you had 10 minutes with President Bush, what would you tell him? If he asked me what, m for my opinions, I'd give them to him. I would, I would, I would do that. Uh, but he hasn't asked, so it's not a real problem. <laughs> How about world leaders, in your mind, that are getting it right? World leaders that are getting it right? Well, I, I thought uh, uh, Gorbachev and Mandela uh, got it right. I think uh, towards the end of his, his administration, I think uh, uh, Ronald Reagan got it right. I mean, he and Gorbachev really brought the Cold War to, to an end. That was a, a wonderful, uh, wonderful situation. And Mandela, with the clerk, got not only did they end uh, apartheid in South Africa, they also they got rid of their nuclear weapons. There have been four countries that have uh, have, have opted for nuclear disarmament. Pakistan, Ukraine, uh, and Belarus sent their nuclear weapons back to Russia, and then South Africa got got rid of theirs. And more recently, uh, Yugoslavia is, is sending their highly enriched uranium back to uh, back to Russia as well. So they could have uh, developed nuclear weapons if they wanted to. They had enough material for two and a half small bombs. Your nuclear threat initiative, you started it two years ago with former Senator Sam Nunn. How do you judge the progress of that and, and its success at this time, two years in? Well, uh, the nuclear threat initiative filled, filled a, uh, a gap. There was no uh, NGO, no private sector uh, major initiative in this, in this area. And we learned with the UN Foundation that, that the private sector can help the government. The government... Uh, is mainly uh, responsible for peace and security uh, issues, but uh, but NGOs, non-governmental organizations can make a contribution, uh, and 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 we have been working very closely with both the United Nations and uh, the United States government, and uh, and with Secretary of State uh, Colin Powell, uh, and and it's I think it's been uh, it, it, it has been useful. It's, it's hard to uh, hard to judge, but in the case of uh, the Yugoslavia nuclear material that uh, was sent back to Russia, uh, the United the uh, Nuclear Threat Initiative contributed five million dollars that, by law, the United States could not have was precluded from doing to to, to make that particular uh, transaction possible. If it, the money hadn't been there, it couldn't have been been done and that, that came from the private sector. How much say do you have over the money that you have given to the UN Foundation? You promised a billion dollars over 10 years, you've given half of that, and you've decided to space out the payments on the back, on the downside. Make it last longer. It lasts a little bit longer. How much say do you have over how that money is spent? I'm, I'm one member of the board of directors okay. and uh, the, the board has full control. So basically, I, 
I, I, I put up the uh, original money. We now have, we're, we're now getting, uh, I think last year, from other, other, uh, other foundations and organizations, Put in almost as much as we did. I think there was like 47 million dollars in other in other funds, uh, from World Bank, lots of different people that that that, that, that and organizations that liked what we're what we're doing, and we found projects that we could jointly jointly fund to to, to improve, in, increase the uh, increase the impact. But as far as how the money is uh, allocated, uh, once it's put into the foundation, the the board of directors. And the, the staff makes recommendations in conjunction with the with the UN, and then and then the board of directors approves or disapproves of, of of those. And I'm just one vote there. You're also one vote on the Turner Family Foundation. I know it's you and your former wife Jane Fonda and your right. children, and and that was started back in the early 90s, predominantly to provide grants to environmental agencies, non-governmental. Uh, agencies as well as population control methods etc and that has been an environmental arm over the course of that time do you think that you could pinpoint one grant and call it your best placed grant uh, the, the Turner Foundation alone was funding over 400 different uh, environmental organizations both national regional and local it's in, in, impossible to uh, uh, to single out one thing, but we there there have been a number of things that we've been uh, extremely proud of at, at the Turner Foundation. One thing we did is we we organized a a, a uh, what we call a partnership project, which was to try and bring the environmental organizations who were operating pretty much independently uh, together, so that and and have a have a uh, one list of all the people that were contributing that we could communicate with, so they. Would be able to have some influence over their legislators on on and 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 to and to get really get the environmental movement organized in a, in a uh, in a way so it could be more more effective. And another thing that we're doing at the Turner Foundation, we're one of many people. We we've started uh, what we call an energy futures coalition that uh, includes the coal companies, the automobile companies, it includes the environmental organizations and the industries that, that are affected working together to come up with an alternate energy program for the United States so we can move away from our dependence on fossil fuel both because we need to do it from an environmental standpoint and we need to do it from a peace and security standpoint because we're getting more and more dependent on Middle Eastern oil and that's the most unstable part of the world if there's a a war over there, God forbid, uh, and, and supplies are disrupted. We need to, to get to uh, wind and hydrogen power uh, as quickly as we can. And, I, and most of the major industries, uh, the coal industry, the power industry, and the automobile industry all realize that now. But, right. uh, and, but historically, they have been fighting tooth and nail with the environmental organizations to keep the, to, to protect the status quo. Now they're willing to talk about hybrid vehicles and because they realize we can't keep going the way that we are. As a man who has made and lost and made all kinds of money, do you find it harder to make money or harder to give it away in a way that makes a difference? Well, it's, uh, uh, it, it, I would say it's hard to make uh, great sums of money. It was much easier in in the 90s because the economy just went up and you had, you know, stocks just doubled and tripled it. You know, a lot of people got extremely wealthy during the 90s on paper. But a lot of it was, uh, was they call it a bubble. And when it burst in the, in the late 90s, uh, you know, lots and lots of people uh, that were still in stocks and equities like myself, uh, went down a lot and I went down the, the whole market went down close to half or maybe somewhere in that neighborhood so so I would say it was easy to lose it it was easy to you know but but I had good ideas with CNN and using satellite and cable TV just stop uh, and but, but it's uh it, it takes different skills to make it than it does to uh, to give it away and I both of them were raw uh, were challenging for uh, for me, but I enjoyed I enjoyed doing both. And and one thing's for sure, I got asked uh, when I was speaking at a 
a university a couple of years ago. I said, what gave you more pleasure, making the money or giving it away? I said, well, you have to, you have to make it before you have the option of giving it away. So it's really, uh, it's really, uh, it's a, it's a complex. It's not an easy question to answer. Well, you're a risk taker by by nature. I mean, you tend to go out on the limb. You're willing well, to take the risk. Well, in life, everyone's a risk taker. If you cross the street, you you know, you get in an automobile or an airplane, you're a risk taker. I mean, but you'll spend money on something simply because you believe it is important. Yeah. It may not make the well, bottom line. I had to have the money first to do it when I didn't have any money, which was not <laughs> too long ago. When I had very little. I didn't have that option, but I did learn that having vast sums of of, of, of money or, or wealth really doesn't mean much. It's how you use it that uh, it's, it, the vast sums of money don't do you much good or anybody much good if it's just sitting there in the bank. Mm -hmm. You have to deploy it, and uh, and 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 it does it it, it does take uh, you know you you tend to like your home or your like any asset that you have you tend to to love it. You know, and, and that makes it hard to give it up. <laughs> so you have to learn how to say, I can do better and I'll feel better by giving this up than I do if I just keep it. Goodwill Games is one example of a risk that you took and you thought that the East and West should come together. 17 years you started it and it was canceled a couple of years ago. Did it, did it do what you wanted it to do? Uh, yes, it did. In my opinion, once again, it's impossible to tell, but... It, in 1986, when we had the first Goodwill Games, it had been there had been two Olympics where first were the United States under Jimmy Carter boycotted the Moscow Olympics, and then the Russians and Eastern Bloc boycotted the uh, boycotted the uh, Olympics in Los Angeles. So we had stopped uh, competing internationally on a major in a major way with uh, with with the, with the then Soviet Union, and the Goodwill Games got got us back. Uh, broke that cycle of boycotts uh, and 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 the and the breakdown that occurred in relations. If you don't, you hold your uh, Olympic team uh, uh, out of the Olympics. I mean, there's not much more you can do with that from there except go to war. Have you ever discovered what money cannot do? Money can't buy happiness. I, I, I absolutely believe that. Can't buy love. It can't buy loyalty. The only way you can get loyalty is to be loyal. And, 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 and the only way that you can find love is you have to love. You're not going to get m much real love without being willing to, uh, to give of yourself. And money hasn't got anything to do, anything to do with that. In fact, it, I mean, in many ways, I think it, it makes it more difficult. For instance, a wealthy person... Uh, uh, doesn't really know for sure whether his friends or her friends are, are real, whether they like you for your money or, or for yourself. If you don't have anything but yourself and you have friends, then they, they must like you for who you are rather than what you have. After all that you have accomplished, do you need a next act? When I started out and was doing these things, I did them mainly because, well, I did them for a number of reasons. I wanted to be a success. I I, I went to school, and my parents uh, and society, you know, in America, you're told you should be a, work hard, get to the top, you know, <laughs> make a good living, you know, uh, be a good citizen, you know, vote. All, I, I did all those things. I still go out and pick up trash on the on the side of the road and put it in the garbage can. I just uh, I, I try and make a positive uh, contribution, but I didn't really have a uh, you know, a, a set agenda or anything. I just uh, was kind of an opportunist, and I just went went through life trying to take advantage of opportunities as I saw them. And then, uh, at, at at when I started making a lot of money, I had read and studied. I read. I'm, I'm a student, and I'm a curious person. I mean, that's CNN, and uh, always want to know what's going on. And I and and I had studied philanthropy, and 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 I started thinking, well, now I'm wealthy. Maybe I can start uh, getting in, into philanthropy. And when I got into it, like I, when I got into cable TV, I, I really got into it. And I, and I started three foundations, the Turner Foundation, the UN Foundation, and the Nuclear Threat Initiative to deal with, uh, with, with all the major problems in the world, the, the overpopulation problem with family planning and the Turner Foundation and the UN Foundation, the environment, uh, 
and and weapons of uh, weapons of mass destruction and peace and security issues. So, so and and I expanded very very rapidly before before my AOL Time Warner stock uh, collapsed. Now I've had to cut back dramatically, but at least I did it while I had it, uh, and I'm and I'm still plugging along the best that uh, the best that I can. And and while I don't have had nearly as much money to contribute as I had before. I have I have some moral authority that I didn't have before, and and I will continue to make whatever kind of contribution I can. I I would like to see uh, humanity make it. I'm concerned that humanity will not make it past the next 50 years. I think that if we can make it for the next 50 years, if we can if we can somehow control the weapons of mass destruction, uh, and 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 not destroy ourselves, commit global suicide, that we will. Because now we have the internet, we have satellite communications. Uh, over half the people in the world can read and write. I mean, we're we're much better educated than we were in 1900. Only 10 or 20 percent of the people in the world could read and that were, were literate. Uh, you know, and then we had World War One, World War Two. We ha we have to uh, learn from the mistakes of the past, and we need to learn quickly because the environment, for instance, the ozone layer and the CO2 buildup in the atmosphere. Can uh, poses a real serious threat to us over the next 50 or 100 years. We we've got to start acting globally, like civilized, educated, decent, kind-hearted human beings. And we have to we have to trust each other. We we have no choice but to trust each other. We can't live in a world where nobody trusts anybody, uh, because then we'll never make progress with these weapons. If you were to die today, was your life a success, and did you have the impact you hoped you would have? Well, I, I, you know, I, I, I couldn't. I, I think that I've, I've done pretty much the best I could in my life, uh, and I've had a wonderful life. And it's been very, very interesting because it wasn't only in business. I mean, I had a lot of success in sports. I, I won the America's Cup. I won over 400 uh, trophies, four World Championships, uh, racing, uh, racing sailboats, and then I won the World Series uh, in 1995 with the, with the Braves. I was part of that. So I've, I've had a, uh, and I've had five wonderful children and, uh, and eight beautiful grandchildren. I, 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 I've been a very blessed, uh, a very blessed person. And I did the best I could. And I'm still doing the best I could. I haven't, I haven't stopped. Martin Luther King said you can't, I get discouraged at times. I tend to get discouraged. Uh, quite frankly, this war has, 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 has been a setback for, for everybody, I wished it could have been uh, resolved, uh, you know, peacefully through negotiation. We don't need more wars in this world. We need less wars. We need we need to bring wars to a successful conclusion. We need to to, to, to humanity. When I say we, it's all of us, uh, because it, it affects us. It affects us all. And 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 and, and uh, so I could, but but we've got to keep on going. We've got to keep going. This war will be over. Will be over soon. Hopefully, we can repair the damage uh, and, uh, and 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 go on and still, you know, make the progress that we need to survive. Ted Turner, thank you so much for this conversation. Pleasure being here.